<laughs> I said score. All right, we are live. We are live. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody, to week two of the Carolina Collegiate Clash. And tonight we have a pretty good matchup here. I believe we're going to be having USC playing against ECU, both the number one and the number five seeds here. It's going to be interesting to see how this plays out as both of these teams are definitely looking to stay in that top five. USC coming off of a very strong representation of their play style in that week one. And same for ECU. What do you think about this one? I mean, it's gonna be it's gonna be a close fought one. I mean, on the podcast we had it we had some really really uh, confident ECU players. So I don't know. ECU seems pretty confident about this one, but USC coming out on top of the land. So I I don't know. Yeah, as we get those as we start getting the match set up here, it's gonna be interesting because but uh, yeah, it may have had. ECU in the top five on the or above USC in the power rankings, but we also got to take into account here that two of the three members um, on the podcast were ECU. What's wrong, Christian? Look like you're struggling sorry, over there. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm working on the I'm working on the game. I think I got it. All right, <laughs> you're good. awesome. Well, it's going to be interesting. Definitely interesting to see how this one plays out as. That podcast may have been a little biased, biased with Ethan and Chief both kind of saying roll pirates maybe over USC, but it's going to be fun to see how this one plays out and how this match develops in this series. Is there anything that you feel like we should be looking for in this matchup? I mean, on ECU, you've got, uh, you've got basically, basically is really, really solid all the way around. I mean, Followed up with Anixis and Chief, a very solid all the way around roster. And then, of course, on USC, we've got Og. Og being the 1v1 like master at that uh, champion short invitational. Uh, I, don't, I don't think Og even dropped a single game in ones. So, they're definitely a dangerous player there. So, I, I mean, I think it's going to be kind of like that battle of like, which which is better that like really really good one pl one player or that really good all the way around team yeah it's definitely gonna be a match to look forward to and it's gonna be interesting to see how these teams come out and show how they prepared for the, each other knowing that this match was coming up but as we get into it and the kickoff is off the first kickoff going in usc's favor with a quick challenge by basically and cat solar up for the play gets a shot on net off the crossbar to pop out to basically cat shuts it down Anixis there for the clear, but Aug beats him to that play. A Chief trying to slow down the play here and get a 50 in his favor, and he does the pop up. Anixis going for the shot. A possible opportunity for ECU. Gets the reset, is not able to connect with it. Aug is there for the clear. Basically, a little hesitant on that one. Definitely had a chance there, but didn't want to commit too much too early in this game. USC, a chance here. The breakaway. Aug can just follow this one in, and you definitely don't want to give up go open nets like that to a team like USC. Absolutely not. USC is a team that is going to capitalize on those open nets, especially Aug demonstrating that he was there for the play and he will capitalize on those open nets. ECU needs to find a way to make sure they are filling in those gaps. Otherwise, it may turn take a turn for the worst for ECU. Yeah, Solar trying to keep that USC offense coming. The touch off of the corner, looking for Aug. Not going to find it. The bump coming through, going to disrupt ECU a little bit. Uh, basically, the catch, looking to flick it over. Cats almost gets the bump. Not going to quite get it, though. And Aug trying to get this one out of that USC side. Looking for the pass mid. Solar over to Cats. Not quite going to find Cats. Basically, the chance for the shot is going to go a little off. Cats looking for control. Now, the quick pop out by Cats. Trying to fall along. Chief is there for the clear to his own corner. Picking up that full boost. 
Trying to slow down and maintain possession here. He fakes it over one. Aug forces low over Solar. An awkward situation. Solar in the net. Anux is going for the shot, and it's a huge save by on that goal line. Now, Chief, looking for the play here. A quick challenge by Katz. Basically, with a challenge blocking Solar's shot, and Aug is there for the maintained possession. Save there by Solar, keeping composure in even the toughest times. Chief, though, trying to keep that ECU offense coming. Basically, the challenge there. Onyx is needing the clear here. Not going to get it. Solar the pop high. Chief's in an awkward spot. Needs the touch. Going to go straight to Katz, though. And Katz finishing that one off there. USC looking really solid at the, at the gate. Absolutely. It looked like EC, or Chief just did not get the touch he was looking for on that goal line. And it looked like the, the ECU player who could have been there for the save looked like he was a little bit awkward trying to get that rotation back for it. And a great play by USC there. With another kickoff going to off the wall. Is ECU there, but a huge beat by Solar. Now another wide open net. Anixus is not able to get back in time, and it looks like things are not going in ECU's favor this time. Yeah, I know that I pointed out Aug, but all three of these players on USC, very good players and very capable of putting that ball in the net when, that, when you even leave the slightest of openings and catch showing that ability to, sh to shoot right there. Now, Chief, trying to leg from the heat, but an accidental bump on the ECU team side. Aug, slowing down the play, looking for the pass mid, gets the touch. Solar's there for the shot, and a huge block by basically. Now, the possible counterattack here goes for the bump. Cat's not able to recover, dodging that bump a tip, and Onyxis puts it in, bringing it down to only a two-goal lead for USC. Yeah, and earlier I was going to bring it up that ECU is doing a great job of making chances happen. They're just not doing a great job of being in the position to actually score on those chances. So we finally get the bump there and finally see that goal and go in for ECU. That's got to bring up the Spirits. And, and just quick... like that, the Spirits coming up even higher is basically finding the open net on USC this time. Looks like Aug got a little bit of a mistouch there and it just did not go in his favor off that wall, leading to a wide open net for ECU to capitalize on. ECU may have gained a little bit of momentum here, coming in, bringing it down to only one goal deficit. I mean, momentum can be everything in a game like this with teams, with two teams that are just so good. Basically, gonna get the flake high to Chief. Chief, the chance, not gonna be enough pressure, enough heat on that shot. Solar looking for the control. Basically, gets the challenge. The pop out mid, not gonna be able to find any there, anybody there though. And Solar looking to turn this pressure around onto the ECU side. The clear from Chief, not gonna find its way out though. Cats putting it back in for Og. The shot gonna be blocked away. Solar, though, keeping the pressure high. The pop going a little high above the net, basically, is going to be make make it there to make that save. Now, there's a lot of USC offensive pressure coming in here with a, almost a double tap attempt by Aug. A, a shot down by Katz, but basically is there on the goal line. ECU needs to get this off their goal line, otherwise USC will eventually sneak one through with that offensive pressure. Now with the 50 on the blue corner. Chief trying to follow up. Anixus is there to capitalize. Now you can see USC trying to take control of this, but ECU is not relenting. But Solar getting a touch off one, just basically left in the goal line. Fakes one out, brings it down low, but Chief is there for the clear. And ECU's defense doing a great job of keeping away this USC offense, but how long can you do it when they got overwhelming pressure like this? Og the beautiful touch, looking for the demo, leaving it for Solar. A big challenge there for Chief, going to leave Cats in the 1v2. The big challenge there, Onyx is going to get it, get the win. Going to look for the demo, not going to find it. Nobody's going to be there to follow that one up either. Og the good double tap, going to put basically with the ball. Cats alone, the flick comes through, and ECU tying this game up. ECU has definitely found the momentum. It seems they figured out USC's play style in this matchup. Well, incorporating those demos, putting USC where they're not able to defend in the proper manner with a great flip by basically getting an overcast on that goal line. A great play there. Now with the kickoff going into the next one. A 50 going in Aug's favor, electing to go for ECU's corner boost, but basically is going to beat him to the pinch. Now with another 50 attempt there, passing it, but Aug is there for the turn. Passing back center, Solar's there for the clear to the side, looking for the pass mid, but Chief is there for the stop. Cat's just going to touch this one to the side for the time to buy USC some time to grab boost. Aug, a big touch there, not letting that one go mid. Going to try and get it out of their side. Anix is there to cut it off. Oh, the pass going just wide by basically. Chief going to keep the pressure high. Aug looking for a touch, going to fake out one. Anix is the challenge coming through, looking for the pass out mid. Going to find something, but not quite a pass to Chief as Solar blocking that one away. 
with an almost pinch attempt there to try and force it into the USC's net with only 20 seconds left. Uh, both teams need to find a way because I don't think either team wants to go into that OT. The huge demo by Cheap, but over a retaliation demo by Solar on Anixis. Basically, trying to play it. Solar taking it in the corner. Anixis forces. Aug with the missed attempt there. That could have been the game winner. Yeah, now, ECU hanging on. Basically going to get a counterattack chance here. You're looking for the touch up. Oh, goes for the double touch. Maybe a better chance to try and fake and go for a high, high shot right there. Now, I know both teams are definitely starting to feel the nerves now. As going into OT... It's going to be interesting with basically with a quick challenge forcing it off the ceiling. Both teams are going to want to win this first match and establish who is here. Who is trying to take this series and get that early lead in them series. Yeah, every goal can be important in a game like this. Basically trying to make one happen for you, ECU. Oh, the cutoff there looking for the pass mid. That one's high above the blue goal, but nobody's going to be there to shoot that one. Onyxis looking for the demo. The challenge going out mid to Chief. Looks for the challenge. Oh, and the bump comes through there for USC. The ECU coming out with a counterattack opportunity. The bump's coming through. And Nixon, the flip reset. And ECU wins game one. What a great play by ECU coming out and taking the early lead against USC. That's going to be a game changer there. It's definitely putting out a statement here in this league. What a great display by ECU there and showing that they are here to compete. They are here to win this series and show that they put themselves above USC for a reason. Now we just need to see how USC responds. Yeah, and USC not yet showing that they're beatable in series, but they have definitely shown that they're beatable in games because in, in the NC State game, it went all the way to game five, a team that was pre previously ranked in the top five. So, I mean... It's definitely possible to beat them in individual games, and ECU already showing that here. And going up early could be what they need to make that make this game happen. Absolutely, and it's definitely going to be interesting to see what kind of adjustments they make, whether it's just adjusting the rotational style or trying to force some opportunities to come out and play to make some action and some pressure on this ball here. And honestly, that ECU is looking pretty hot right now. Yeah, I mean, especially towards the like. Towards the latter end of that game, I mean, ECU definitely dominated the second half of that game, and USC really couldn't find anything. I believe we actually had USC go up, and then ECU came back all the way with the counters. So, I mean, coming into game two, USC has a lot to prove. Absolutely, and it's going to be interesting to see what type of adjustments they bring out of the field here. But as these teams start joining up into these matches, what kind of things do you think USC might try and tweak in here? Is it bumps, demos, more just pass play, or...? I, I think it might just even be getting getting players with more space and letting them letting them control the ball a little bit because they do kind of give the ball away a lot. As this one challenge gonna go all the way down to basically, basically the controlled touch needs another one. That one's gonna fall, and the Knicks is saving them on that play. Chief though the awkward touch and a needed touch there from the ECU side, but not enough as the overwhelming pressure from USC gonna find the goal. Now, USC going up a quick 1-0, just like that first series. This is giving a little bit of deja vu here, but nonetheless, it was a great play by USC to sink that one in the back of the ECU net. Now, jumping into this next kickoff, it's going to be interesting to which team tries to capitalize. This Solar tries to get the touch off the wall, doesn't get the touch he's looking for. Now, with a huge demo, Chief in another 1v2 situation, gets 150, plays it past Aug to the center. Is anyone there to capitalize? But no, Katz is there for the save. And I think, I think right now ECU just has to keep their composure. They did a great job in game one of doing that, but so far in game two, a lot of missed touches. And Chief, the big clear there, going to get Pat's cast. That's what they needed. All going to try and put this one back in, and Nix is there for the challenge. That one going to drop to basically, basically up to a Nix is looking for the midfield pass. That one's going to be a little high, and Chief not able to read it. That was a great opportunity there by ECU with basically maintaining that pressure. Catch trying to get it off his side of the field. Anixis looking for the pass mid, but a Solar hits it out to Aug. Aug, possible shot opportunity, but not able to get there in time. Now looking for another center opportunity here. Anixis missing the touch there. Almost fakes out the USC side, but Katz was all over that play. Yeah, and right now both teams still looking to make something happen other than that first goal coming off the missed touch. Solar almost a chance there for the redirect. Not going to find it, but Og, the beautiful read off the back wall, puts USC up 
Now, this is starting to give me a lot of deja vu here with that first series game. Going up quick 2-0, then a possible 3-0. Then Isu could try and pull this back. But right now, it looks like USC is controlling all the pressure, and they're controlling the momentum of this game. Yeah, right now, it's not really a, it's not a rotation thing. It's not a this. It's not a that. It all comes down to the little touches that ECU can't quite make. And USC just doing a better job at making the little touches matter. As Cats with the touch there almost gets the almost getting the bump there is Og, but not quite gonna find it. Basically the clear coming up the field. Solar trying to control the challenge coming through for basically Cats beating base basically in the corner. This one going high and Nixus with the shot opportunity, not gonna find it. That one off to basically. And Solar has a chance to counterattack. Now Solar with the messed up touch there. And Chief does get the, oh, the wide open net. Basically there for the shot. And Aug is not able to get back in time. Bring it to a one goal lead for USC. That was a great passing play. You can see Solar trying to get that demo attempt on Chief. But he was just outside of his reach. Leading to a perfect play for ECU. Yeah, and ECU trying to make this upset considered happen. As USC the higher ranking and power rankings. But... You, ECU not wanting to go away in this series, uh, uh, getting that goal finally. I think I think it'll start to ease the pressure a little bit. But that missed touch is going to leave a wide open net. A great job there by Chief making the save. They need another one. And Cat's going to put this one to the side. And Nix is the ch chance for the clear. No boost, though. Going to touch it to Og. Og to Solar. Solar to Og. Oh, and they missed the touch on the pre-flip. That was an unfortunate situation for USC. It was a beautiful passing play. It was right in their hands. But they just weren't able to connect. But Aug is there to put it in that top left corner. Bringing it back to a two goal lead. Now it looks like USC got a little flustered there on that missed passing play. But they were able to capitalize almost immediately with Aug trying to slot that in that top left corner there. I think it all comes down to boost control. I can't necessarily see it, how much each player has. But I can definitely tell ECU is really low in that circumstance. Because no player able to quite challenge that one in the air another pass coming through and cat's gonna slot that one high now it looks like usc is definitely controlling all the momentum and pressure here going down in that first match might have caused them to focus up a little bit more and be like we need to put some more effort into this match up here and show that we are not just going to lose these games that easily yeah i mean a titan like USC coming out of coming into this into this game, they uh, definitely don't want to lose the first one. Cat's gonna look for the double, almost gonna find it. Nix is looking for the catch, gonna get challenged immediately. Chief gonna try and get some control. They can't get any though. Any though, this offensive pressure here from USC is so overwhelming. Well, the almost great passing attempt there from Solar to Aug, but another huge 50, a constant 50 battle with a pinch going downfield right to basically his hands. Basically, getting a touch up. It looks like Aug might beat him, but no. Oh, Aug plays for the touch off the ceiling. And with a huge demo there on Anixis, leaving a wide open ball for Cats. Now, Chief trying to get the shut down, but he misses the touch there, leaving it for another USC shot attempt. And not able to get it as Aug slots it into that top right corner, and putting ECU down by four goals. And I think the big highlighting thing here is composure for this USC roster and not being able to make the shots when they need them, being able to make the passing touches when they need it. The overall composure from their team is looking amazing right now. And ECU kind of crumbling on the defensive side to this pressure coming through. They're not able to keep composed on certain touches. It definitely looks like as well that they're, they're not giving Aug enough credit. They're playing for these low touches. And so far this matchup, Aug has put almost every shot on net into one of those top hard to defend corners. And it, ECU needs to find a way to block those shots as another shot opportunity comes for USC, but basically it's there for the clear. But now Cats trying to get the touch. Anixus with the shot, not able to connect, but Aug misses. Solar pops it back, and it basically passes to Anixus. But Anixus is low on boost and not able to proceed. That play right there is exactly what I'm talking about. ECU with a chance to secure a whole lot of pressure on that USC side. And the pass is just a little bit behind their teammate. They need those passes to come through if they're going to beat a team like USC. And they see the chance here. And another one just a little too close to the defense. Now you can see USC trying to capitalize on that missed opportunity. Aug almost puts one into another corner. Onyx is trying to play for a 50. Solar off the backboard. Does not get the double touch. But beats two. Only one USC defender left. Doesn't get the touch he's looking for. But Onyxus is there. And an accidental block by basically on the USC goal line. That's got to be devastating for ECU right there. 
Yeah, you definitely want that one back. If not to win this individual game, just for the just for the momentum that that could have given you going into the next one, ECU really trying, really struggling to put together the offensive plays that they need. And I, I really do think it just comes down to composure. I think they've just got to just got to settle down a little bit and get those touches where they need them. Absolutely, it looked like ECU started. It looked like ECU started struggling on the defensive side, like you were saying. And USC just may have found that weak weakness in their rotation on that goal line, making it a little bit awkward. And with Aug's ability to put it so accurately into those corners, I think it's just putting ECU where they're just not able to defend it correctly. Now, yeah. it's going to be interesting to see what kind of what kind of adjustments ECU tries to make because they did go up one game early on in this series, so it's going to be. A very big game changer to see if they are able to adjust and get in that correct mental space going into this third match. Yeah, and I know I know games like this can be super stressful. Um, and like I guess the best thing that you could do is just kind of take a deep breath. You know that you've been here before. You've you've been in these big matches before. Just kind of you know take a deep breath. It, it just uh, it go back to the basics and make sure that all of your passes are connecting and. I, th I think they'll start seeing a lot more open up once they get those passes coming through. Absolutely, and it's definitely, like, like like you were saying, can making those controlled touches a little bit more softer, make sure you're trying to maintain that possession, because as we saw in that first game, that's how ECU was able to dominate so strongly, is maintaining that possession. But jumping into game three here with a kickoff, going quickly into basically his way, looking for the double tap, Solar's there for the block. Cats trying to get it clear, but Chief with a great shot, beating Cats to the ball, going up 1-0 early on in this game three here. And this one getting a little bit of help here, I think, from the from the redirect coming out from Cats. I it did come out. Cats trying to make it there, but Chief beating him out just a little bit. And then the ball unfortunately finding its way right off of Cats's hood. And ECU going up big, going up here is big, showing that they can come back right from that five one deficit and put a lot of pressure here on USC. Oh, I definitely know ECU is starting to feel the confidence, start coming back a little bit. They're staying in that correct mental space with a great pinch by Katz. Chief trying to get it off the side. Onyx is trying to follow. Not able to beat past Aug, but Ch Chief playing for the 50, shooting off to the left side for Solar. And a double tip by Solar and a great play, but Aug isn't able to finish it through. But all three ECU's defenders committed. Is USC going to be able to slot it? And no, US or ECU is able to get out of the danger looking for the pass to Chief. Chief the flick, not going to find it over Aug. Going to need a little more power if you're going to get past that defender. Basically trying to control, looking for a Nixus. Aug interrupting up to Katz. Katz off the backboard, looking for the read. Not going to find it. That would have been a great play, but Solar going to clean it up. Uh, I think right here in this situation, you can see ECU is definitely struggling a little bit on that boost side for that defensive play. Having to take a guess of where that shot was going, and there was not much they could do about that that play on that goal line yeah and i mean I, I i i think it comes down to lack of a backboard presence if that makes sense i just don't think they're not they're putting a player on the backboard in a lot of these plays and against a team that's going to play it high like this every single time you've got to have somebody on the backboard to clear it away but chief the flick high gonna try and find whoever's lurking up field but not quite gonna find it usc doing a great job of interrupting these passing plays and almost a great job of redirecting those but Solar beats out one. Aug looking for the redirect. Basically going to get the clear. Now ECU having that offensive pressure, but Solar's there to counter. Trying to force it and slow down the play. Let his team recollect. Basically saying not today, but Katz is there for the clear out. Now with another play to the middle. USC trying to get that pressure, but ECU's there to return. With almost a devil attempt on Aug. Basically last one back, trying to slow it down, but Solar bangs it to Katz. Off that left side, Cats looking for the pass to Aug, but Aug with an accidental pass by Chief, but in an awkward situation on the goal line, but Anixus is able to slow it down. Now, trying to, try to get this off ECU's side, but basically it looks like he's going to hang back. A great catch there from Chief, losing that one to Anixus. Solar, though, going to cut it off. Solar looking for the pass mid to Cats. Cats up high to the backboard, and there's that backboard defender that I've been saying they need. Basically clearing it out. Og though the catch over one not over chief though a great a great clear there but the challenge gonna find its way in and USC taking the lead that was a devastating play right there for ECU and it looked like that third man just was not able to get back it was basically committed no one was there to defend the worst case scenario and that pinch coming off of that wall now going down by one goal here it's gonna be interesting to see how ECU responds 
Yeah, and I think basically kind of thought that there was two USC players up and they were probably going to get demoed, but I guess your goal there would be to buy as much time as possible. But not going to dwell on that play too much. ECU trying to get right back onto that offensive side. Basically off of the ba off of the sidewall. Og, the control off of the backboard. Looking for the play pass to Nixus. The inter interception, though, going to look for the pass. Off the sidewall, gets it past. Oh, doesn't quite get it past Cats. The control there coming out from USC roster. The flick high, looking for the pass mid. And Og going to try and challenge that one. But And both teams kind of just staying right here around the middle. Now you can see USC starting to try and implement more and more passing plays with another unfortunate touch by ECU, but a great recovery by Chief there for the block. Now Solar banging one off the ceiling, basically able to clear to the side. Chief passing back mid, but Aug is there, but he doesn't commit. Basically dragging out two USC defenders, but Katz is able to store enough time or stall enough time there. Anixis trying to get the one downfield. Now basically with a possible shot opportunity here, but is it going to get there in time? And it does, and ECU ties this game with the equalizer. Yeah, and USC has kind of shown this, that they've got that that old G2-like presence where they put a lot of offensive pressure up, but if you can survive that offense for long enough, there will be a gap on that defensive side, and, they, and there's going to be shot opportunities. And ECU surviving this one and able to make the shot, but almost not surviving that one. Og looking for the double touch gets blocked away. Now, ECU started to have a little bit more of a backboard presence. Might put some issues for USC as a lot of their play styles seem to be coming off of that backboard. Now, with ECU looking for the pass, but an awkward corner bounce, but Aug with a beautiful catch on the goal line, beating both defenders from ECU with an attempted musty. Pass to Katz. Katz going for the double. No backboard presence, but a great save by Chief blocking Katz's double tap on that goal line. Talking about composure, Chief getting bumped and still making the save when it's necessary, basically. Looking for the clear out. Cats there to intercept. And Nixus intercepts Cats. A solar in an awkward position. Has to touch this one high. Gets the second touch. And that was definitely needed there for this USC roster. And Cats going to try and keep this one up the field. The redirect there from Aug. Basically off of the sidewall. Gets it up the field. Solar going to control that one. Both these teams kind of getting a lot of pressure here on the midfield. Chief, the challenge coming through. That one's a little awkward. Aug going to put that shot on. Basically puts it to the side. On with a... a Almost a beautiful save by Nexus, but Solar is able to keep up that pressure and making it such a difficult save. It just does not work out for ECU. Great positioning there, sneaking it just under Chief, but just outside of a Nexus uh, range of reach, and it slots it up to go up by one goal. Man, that's got to be devastating for ECU. 23 seconds left in this game. They've got to try and make something happen. Almost getting the demo there off the kickoff, and just like that. A, a defender creeps up just a little too far and basically slotting it behind. What an accidental feels flip and an absolute tragedy by Solar on that USC goal line. Not accidentally hitting the backflip there and leading it to an equalizer with only 20 seconds left. Both teams are got to be sweating by now. Man, this one looks like a nail biter in 14 seconds. USC on that offensive pressure basically makes the save. Chief gonna have to do it again. Gets it past one of the clear coming out. An awkward touch there. Leaves it mid. There, is there a shooter there? They beat out Cats and the bump coming through. Chief gonna put it put it in the net with two seconds left. ECU takes the lead. What a great display of recovery there with the accidental fields flip killing USC's momentum on that offensive pressure. Now ECU capitalizing with only two seconds left. There is still the possibility here for USC to come back, but everything's going to have to go their way. And off the kickoff, a great job of keeping it low. ECU up to one. Going to try and make that, uh, that underdog win happen. I mean, we've already seen it once this week. Why not again? Absolutely. Now... This has definitely turned into an absolute nail-biter as both of these games have been such a one-goal deficit game and so close the entire way and very equal the whole match. Uh, you can see I am smiling uncontrollably, uncontrollably here with excitement watching this matchup. And it's going to be interesting to see how USC responds as I know they do not want to lose this game. Yeah, I mean, they're definitely trying to keep that number one seed going all the way through, but... Man, would this would this make things a little bit more interesting on Tuesday? ECU trying to make these talks just that much more interesting, and they're doing a they're doing a great job of just keeping composed. So, I mean, this one looking good, but USC gonna try and take it all the way to Game Five, and I'm here for it. 
Absolutely, and it's going to be interesting to see how USC comes back from this, as I know that that accidental field flip has got to be devastating for Solar, and he's got to be feeling that th that game was on him, that he was not able to get that save. But jumping into this next match here, it's going to be a fun one to see how either USC decides to bring it back for the tie, or ECU is going to go for the win. And I do think if ECU can, they, while they took that game, they're still not quite connecting how they want to. I think if they can start connecting, it's going to be a hard one for USC to fight through. This challenge going up mid, nobody's there to follow it, though. ECU looking for the pass back across. Nobody's there for the touch. Basically, the shot opportunity and basically puts ECU up 1-0 in this game. What is happening on this USC def defense here? Is It looks like it's just not connecting and they're not able to get the touches they're looking for and all trying to get the save there but with very limited boost he's not able to get there in time and ecu is able to go up very early on in this match i mean anybody can be any but anybody on any given day and ecu trying to make it happen here basically I'm gonna get another opportunity here a one on one aug left in the net alone the flip reset coming through the fake solar has has to make the touch and does so another one coming out to cats Onyxus almost intercepting Chief there to block Og. That one coming back mid. Solar across the Cats. Cats looking for some control. The defensive passing here from USC is impressive. And th I think that's been the difference maker. Absolutely. And now ECU trying to capitalize here. Basically an Og in a 1v1. But Og does not lose those 1v1s as he demonstrated last year at the Champion Shore Invitational. He wins those. Great play by Og there. Beating basically on the goal line with a perfect shot to that right side bringing this back to a 1-1 game. And those pop touches can be the most dangerous thing in Rocket League when you're in those 1v1 situations because so many things can happen from them. The kickoff, though, ECU almost having a chance. Cats cutting it off, though. And Nixus looking for the bump on Cats, making sure Cats can't make anything happen. Basically looking for a catch. That one immediately be being challenged, though, on Nixus. Trying to slow it down. This pace is going to get changed here by ECU. But USC speeding it right back up, right into the corner. Og looking for the pass mid. Basically not going to find the touch. And Cass is always there to slot those ones. It looked like ECU was starting to struggle a bit on that boost side. Basically only with zero boost on that attempt there. He was trying his hardest, but a great shot by Cats, Sneaking it just past him and basically not able to connect with the touch he's looking for. I do really think it's just a story of two different teams that like to play at two different speeds. ECU preferring that slow speed to try and slow stuff down and USC just trying to keep it going fast at all times and they're really showing it right now with this offensive pressure. Cat's not going to be able to find that one past the Nixus and that one going right back across is basically is an awkward position. The challenge coming out to Og. Og beating out one defender but Chief there to clear it away. And an awkward touch there gives ECU a chance for some pressure here. The touch high by Anixis, looking for the bump on Cats, not going to find it. And Chief here, the chance to try and keep this one high, but Og beats him out. Basically has to make the touch up the field. Solar keeping it in, though. And the double touch there, it's going to put this one in an awkward spot. Basically has to make the second one. Cats mid, is Og there? No. No one there to clean it up for USC. Now with a huge double commit there on ECU's goal line, but there was no immediate repercussion for that. But another accidental double commit, but Anixis is there to clear to his corner to Chief. Chief. Trying to get this here with a 50. Going in Solar's favor, but basically beats him to the play. Now with Aug in a 1v1 or a 1v2 situation. Passing to Solar with a great shot by Solar. Hitting it off the post. Going in to bring it up to a two-goal lead USC. That was a great passing play there by USC. You could see from a mile away that he was looking for Solar in that corner. And good thing Solar was there to read up on the play. I was actually going to point out a USC double commit in the corner, but... I guess it doesn't matter if you double commit in the corner when you have Aug back there ready to clear it right back up to you as Solar looking for Cats here and not quite going to find it. Basically the control, but Aug the challenge win going to pop it mid and Chief makes the big read on that one. And Nix is the challenge. That one might find its way straight into the net and it does so ECU bringing this one right back to a one goal game. Now that, that might be... The karma there for getting that accidental 50 goal that went straight into ECU's net earlier, it's only fair that it returns the favor there. I mean, sometimes it goes back and forth, and this game is the definition of back and forth as a Nixus getting the, getting the ch initial pop over one, but getting bumped away. Solar, the control, looking for the pass mid, the pinch a little too hard, and Nixus going to try and turn this one back to that USC side. The fake on Cats... 
and Og, the chance here, pops it high, basically needs the touch, not gonna find it, Chief, an amazing save. Now with ECU starting to run low on boost here, and a, another passing attempt, and it goes into that right side corner, once again, Og showing that his accuracy is unstoppable in those corners, he is so far, I think he's almost nailed every corner shot that he has hit. And it's truly a great display there by USC. And once again, we're seeing USC start to pull away with that momentum change. Like I've said before, it it definitely seems like USC de prefers to be on that offensive side. And it, the moment, the, if you can survive their offensive onslaught, you can get goals. You just kind of have to be able to push your way through it. And ECU really struggling so far. Cast the big clear there. Going to leave Chief in an awkward position. Needs to touch, not going to find it. Cast not able to put that one in, though. That was great backboard defense there by Chief. The pass mid, and Aug almost putting in the corner, but Katz is there off the crossbar. Is ECU, ECU does get it off the goal line. Now Solar trying to maintain possession here. Now this is a very stressful situation here as ECU does not want to go down by three goals. Now looking for the pass mid, but no one on USC there to capitalize. But ECU with the double commit, with the pass to Solar, basically is there for the clear. Yeah, and ECU trying to make the passing plays happen out of their side, but... That doesn't seem like they're communicating it well. Chief going to get the ch the big win there. All going to put this one right back onto their side. The flip reset. Not going to find it past basically. Basically needs a second touch here. Going to beat out one. Looking for a teammate up the field. And Nixus beats out a second. Basically with the shot opportunity. All going to be able to save that one to the side with ease though. Once again, we're starting to see USC start taking capitalizing, or capitalizing on ECU's a lot of just giving away possession to USC and it seems to be that's where they're thriving the most is when the other team is not maintaining possession with a pass to the backboard solar with an awkward touch maintaining possession here with a 50 off of the Nixus uh, trying to get a touch of zero boost with a possible shot opportunity and a great save by Katz now with 24 seconds ECU needs to find something they cannot afford to go back underneath that USC pressure with a pass to the Nixus and Nixus for the shot and a possible opportunity but does not connect Basically trying everything they can there to get that bump and just not able to reach as basically again gonna have to make this touch right here Chief gonna try and beat out Solar. Solar the challenge straight into their net and Nixus not enough boost to make the save. Solar puts this one guarantees this win for USC bringing us to game five. Yeah it's an unfortunate situation it looks like Nixus had a little too much speed there on that goal line and jumped a little too fast but going down by three goals, only three seconds left. It looks like this game's, game's gonna definitely go in the USC's favor. But the possible opportunity, Chief trying looking to Looking get... for the momentum. Oh, they're not gonna find it. You know they've wanted that one just for the momentum going into the next game. Absolutely. Now, it's gonna be interesting. This is game five between the first and the current fifth seed. It's gonna be a definitely a matchup. Is There's a little bit of egos going on in this one. And both teams wanna establish that they are better than the other. And it's going to be interesting to see, especially how this after-match podcast goes with the winner. Yeah, and neither team really playing perfect, as USC is very quick to throw everything up the field. And so ECU's done a great job of capitalizing on that. But ECU definitely getting a little shaky on the defensive lines. So I think it's just going to come down to whichever team is able to fix their flaws first in this Game 5. Absolutely. I definitely want to see ECU come out a little bit more in maintaining that possession a little bit as we saw in both the first and the third game that they came out and once they took control of that possession they were able to control the pace and it looked like it made USC a little bit awkward but they cannot afford to go underneath that USC pressure otherwise it's going to definitely go in USC's favor and I know that's what USC is wanting to put out on the field today. Yeah, and immediately trying to return some of that pressure, but Cat's going to get the air dribble, looking for the flip reset, not going to find it, gets the pinch, basically makes the save, and Nix is going to turn on this one. Solar, pass one, gets the challenge, Chief clears it out, and ECU buying their, buying their space for the time being. All going to try and put it right back down, though. The touch, pass one, two Cats, and just like that, straight from one side to the other, USC scores. What a great play, all getting it just over Chief. And great play on Katz, being able to read that he's bumped and putting that shot on net, sneaking it just past basically he was not able to get back in time. That was a great play by USC. And with going into this next one, ECU needs to not let that get in their head. With the 50 going in Aug's favor. Aug with all the boost he needs, but he chooses not to go for it. With a shot by basically off to the left side, Katz is there. Now Chief trying to follow, but no boost to his name. He's forced to try and make a play. 
Now Solar and Cats beats him to that ball, and basically it should be there for the clear, but it's just off the post. Oh, the pass mid, and Nixus beats out one. Solar, though, gonna spawn back just in time. Chief trying to keep this one high for basically, basically to the middle. The shot coming through, but an easy save for Og there. Solar, the touch to Og. Not going to find it, though. The the bounce coming through, and a Nyx is going to disrupt that play. Chief, the chance for the counterattack. Challenged immediately, though, by Katz. And Nyx is keeping this one high. Going to chan get a chance for a second touch. Gets it past another. And Og there to control. And a big challenge there. Puts this one right back onto that ECU side as they scramble to recover. Now the huge bang downfield. Once again, ECU is giving up a little too much possession here with the pass to Nixus. Looking for the pop-up. Doesn't get the touch he's looking for. Now with a huge demo on catch. Bring up some space and Solar able to get in. It might go straight in and it's off the post and ECU is able to go in there and get the save. Now with USC trying to get the play here. Now basically... Looking for the clear. Katz is trying to follow up. It's a little bit of an awkward situation there for ECU. But Solar trying to get the double top, but no boost to his name. And Aug is able to slot it in for the miss. Yeah, and I think right now we're just seeing that panic come through for ECU. Players jumping for stuff they don't necessarily need to jump for. Nobody on the back wall to try and deal with those touches up. And players, are they just got to calm down a little bit when they get on defense. Because if they can calm down and take those opportunities at stride they can they can definitely take this series as so this touch comes mid solar gonna make a big save it definitely is starting to look like ecu is a little bit on their heels here trying to find some momentum trying to get something going here a little bit of an accidental bang there Aug here to take it up on that left side gets it over one looks for the pass to solar solar's up for the shot and a redirect off to the right side basically is there but Aug is there for the pass back mid cats trying to get one down the middle looks for the bump instead Aug trying to get the shot here but is quickly blocked yeah, and Solar keeping that pressure high. That That's what USC likes so far in this series. And Nixus, the chance here to beat out Aug, but another big touch there coming out for Aug. Going to put ECU back on their heels. Basically, the control touch over one. Aug gets the challenge. Solar looking for the pass to Katz. Doesn't choose to take it. Chief high. And Katz going to deal with that one with ease or not right into their own net. A devastating own goal there, I believe, by Katz off the ceiling, right? That was... Yeah, Cats with the yeah. accidental own goal. Bringing it back to only a one goal lead for USC. You never know. That might be the momentum that ECU needs. Little little oopsie I, I whoopsie mean, there. Even own goals can give you all the momentum in the world. Is Solar going to get this one off of the corner? And, and Nixus needs to touch. Not going to find it. And Og there to clean it up. USC doesn't want that one to give ECU any hopes. What happened there on the ECU defensive goal line there? It looked like there was a little bit of confusion on who should be going for the ball here. It looked like they were a little confused on whether it should be Chief or basically committing for that on the play on the wall there. But it looks like it just works out in USC's favor. Basically beating out one. Going to try and pass it to Chief. Og needs the touch. Is going to get it. That one's on target. Nope. Just a little off. And Nix is going to clear this one to the side. Basically almost getting bumped. Going to deal with this one over to Chief. Chief up the field. They're, those are those clears that we're saying they need to clean up. They need to definitely try and find each other more on, on these plays. Now, Aug oh, trying to get a 50 here. Basically getting over one with a wide open net. And Anixus is able to bring it back to a one goal deficit. An unfortunate situation there for USC is Aug oh, does not get the pinch. And then Solar misses the touch, leaving a wide open net for Anixus. That's got to hurt for USC, but they know they're still up one goal. They just can't afford to let ECU come back here. And even with with all the mistakes coming through, this game is staying scrappy. Chief, the touch high. Not going to find the second touch. And Nixus beats his, team, his player, though. That one off the corner. Solar gets the touch to clear it away. And Og, the big challenge that win there. Going to get a second touch up to Katz. Katz getting bumped away by Og, though. The chance for Solar basically gets the catch. Looking for a pass mid. And Solar there to cut it off. The huge demo on Aug there. You know what I say? The best way to not have a defender is just delete him from the match with almost a read from Katz off of the clear. Now Onyx is trying to follow up with a pinch downfield to Chief. Chief quickly cut off by Aug. Now basically in a 1v2 scenario here, he's forced for a touch and he's not able to get in. Aug once again demonstrating that he is a huge threat on this field. Again, that, that scrambling on defense is basically couldn't decide whether or not to go to backboard or go down and try and play the save and I definitely think the backboard was the better play there but looking back at that one basically probably wants another chance.
Now Chief trying to get the beat. Gets it over Aug here, but drops it down the solar with his quickly 50 by basically. Going into there, almost a wide open net, but a Nixus is there, able to get back in time. But the pinch down midfield. But now Chief getting one demo, basically trying to get the touch here, but it goes back mid. Cats trying to get the demo here. Aug going for the play. Beats basically, but he's bumped out of the double tap opportunity. But Chief doesn't get the touch, and Solar brings it to a three-goal lead. And things are not looking good for ECU here, as USC seems to have all the momentum right now. I think that one about shuts it out for, for USC. I mean, I've seen weirder stuff happen, but not against a team like USC. That offensive pressure is just too much. Absolutely, and definitely, it looks like there just might be some issues on that uh, ECU offensive side and defensive side. It's another missed save by basically brings it to a four-goal lead for USC. Things are looking devastating for ECU. As USC seems to be walking away with this match in Game Five. Yeah, again, I think I think the issue overall for ECU is just those control touches. They're not necessarily getting the control touches on defense, and they're not getting the control touches on offense that they need. And both sides are struggling from it because they're not able to make the plays when they need it on offense and they're not able to control the ball when they need to on defense to relieve some of that pressure that they're getting from USC. Absolutely. With another missed opportunity there by ECU, it seems that they might just start panicking a little bit much as they are trying to find some way to get back into this with a 50 going off the backboard, not in ECU's favor. Now in another 1v2 situation, but Chief deletes Cats from the middle of the field and it looks like USC is going to win this match up here. Now, jumping into analyzing this, it looks like ECU was just not able to capitalize with a, almost a shot, trying to put one final game in, and it does not go in their favor. That is unfortunate for ECU. And it looks like, honestly, the opportunity was there for ECU. It was there. But they just weren't able to capitalize on USC's mistakes quick enough. They were letting them recover and make those challenges even quicker, and they needed the put that pressure they just could not maintain it. It, it it all again comes down to just those little touches that they needed to try and get to the player that they needed to try and get it to and i i think i think if you played this one again and again i think you'd get different results every time so it's a great one to watch and definitely one we'll be looking forward to and maybe playoffs Oh yeah, playoffs, it's going to be interesting to see how these teams come up and match up against each other. And I'm I'm excited. ECU definitely, they may have lost, but it's not a game to hang your head about. All you found was some mistakes that you need to work on. But USC, once again, showing that they are the number one seed for a reason. And they deserve that number one spot in the power rankings. So it's going to be interesting to see how these teams rank each other next Tuesday on the podcast. But quickly, we're going to take a short break as we're actually going to have the USC Captain Cats come on here for a quick little post-game interview. So we will be right back.
Welcome back, everybody, to the C3 Esports League post game interview. Here today, we have Cats RL with us. How? What were your thoughts on that match, Cat? It looked like you got a little close there. Yeah, you know, we like keeping things entertaining. Um, <laughs> you know, we went to five against NC State, and we went into this, and we were like, you know, it could go to five again. Why not? No, but ECU, they, they played a very good game. Uh, we definitely went in there, probably a little bit overconfident, especially considering, you know, this. So we went in there thinking that it was probably going to be a little bit easy. Uh, we had a good 3-0 lead in game one. They did a great job to bring that one back. They had one of the goals as well. I think it was to win their second win where, uh, I forget who it was, but they bumped Aug, and then they also redirected it up in the net. And we were astonished to say the least as to how that just happened uh but it was you know the games that we won we we won very confidently and the games that we lost we came out looking the way we wanted to but couldn't defend the lead so ecu played a great game but ho hopefully uh we'll be able to do it a little bit cleaner next time yeah it's definitely going to be interesting to see as like ecu has definitely shown that they're they are capable to compete with y'all but there was definitely some games where it looked like y'all were just kind of walking away with the game going up by like th four three three four goal leads and ecu just wasn't able to keep up on that pressure and i, I definitely gotta i gotta commend y'all y'all's usc pressure is seems to be almost unbeatable this, so far kind of counting the land and this season but are there any like special words like kind words you want to say to future rosters coming up to play against you this season um, yeah, I mean, I really love the Carolina League and the concept of playing against all the universities in North and South Carolina. I think that it's going to lead to a lot of very fun storylines. It's going to lead to a lot of really cool interactions at the LAN as well and, and all that good stuff. So, you know, best of luck and hopefully take me to game five. <laughs> Quote unquote, hopefully, hopefully. Uh well, we're shooting 100% right now, so they can keep taking us to game fives. As long as we win the series, I don't care. <laughs> That's totally fair. Like, now, the, the G2 of old. <laughs> <laughs> um, it looked like Aug definitely came out in a dominating fashion, and it looked like the, he he was low in those corners that matchup. And is that like something y'all play for? Like his, his ability to hit those top top right, top left corners, or is it just he's just he's just built different? It's just the Aug effect. You know, we, we just kind of bring him out there, and you know, he's he's going to win us the game and, and <laughs> as long as solar you know i own gold like twice maybe three times you know as long as i don't do that too much we're fine uh and as you know solar and i we definitely do play in a way that is supportive of, of his skill set um and you know he's got some very phenomenal experience you know he just got top 24 in the last rlcs qualifier so he, he brings in a lot of high level competency to this team Absolutely, yeah. We definitely want to watch out for those uh those own goals. It looked like Aug was a little upset about it, spamming all those quick chats at you, saying, "Wow, nice one, nice one, nice one." But overall, I think I think y'all played a great game, and it's gonna be interesting to see as this season develops. And I, where do you think you're gonna stand on the the power rankings on Tuesday? Because you know, so right now we got UNCW, we got an ECU player, so uh, you got Chief on there, so that's gonna, he might be a little hurt about that match. Then we got Coolio on there, so where do you think you're gonna be placed on that? I mean, if they're being not biased, then number one. If they want to bring me down, then they're just compromise. You know, they're they're just uh, making their own rankings seem wrong. I, I think that coming in, we were the one seed. We won the land that determined it. We have positive records against all the teams in Carolina. Um, I don't actually know the last time we lost a series to a Carolina school. It might have been like UNC Charlotte and some like CRL Open thing, um, like best of three format, but. You know, number one, and I, I really do predict that we'll we'll do everything that we can to remain there. Uh, I don't want to jinx us, but you know, we're putting in the work where we can. Especially, Aug, dudes at like a hundred past two right now, prepping for RLCS. So, oh lord, yeah, yeah, you definitely don't want that casters effect or that that stream effect where you just jinx yourself and everything starts going <laughs> wrong all out of nowhere for no reason. We definitely had some situations like that happen that in the B League matches where as soon as we said something, it was <laughs> they were scoring immediately. <laughs> <laughs> Saying well, stuff. We, we need this um week four we have to play y'all <laughs> yeah i think uh yeah y'all get about a week a week by before uncw has to play usc how you feel about that one knowing that especially um, knowing that uncw just beat uh uncc yeah i mean i think that uncc is one of those teams that has the ability to play at a very high level um 
But I mean, if they're losing to UNCW with no disrespect, it's probably a little bit of a consistency problem. Uh, <laughs> UNCW, especially from, you know, I haven't played them outside of the LAN, but from what we saw at the LAN, I, I don't think that they should be beating UNCC and them doing that, though, it doesn't really concern me. Oh, boy. So you're feeling pretty confident about that UNCW matchup. Yeah, I would say so. Oh, boy. Well, it's definitely going to be interesting to see how that one plays out. But once again, overall, great matchup here. If there's any final words you have to say about how you're feeling about this matchup, any words to ECU for condolences or, you know, just get better? Anything like that? Uh, we might try and go to game five every series that we play. You know, we're, just... <laughs> we're 2-0 right now doing it. You know, clearly, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? No, but, uh, you know, GG's to, to ECU. They, they played a very good game, uh, and I'm looking forward to seeing them at the land. Awesome. Well, we appreciate you taking the time to come out here. I know you were very eager to do a post game interview about this one. So, honestly, I well, think the, the disrespect on the power rankings <laughs> had to be announced. You know, you could always address them on the Tuesday podcast. It's always an opportunity. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean... <laughs> but anyway, overall, great game, Christian. You got anything you want to say? I don't think so. All right. Well, sounds good. We appreciate you taking the time to come out here, and we look forward to seeing y'all play against UNC or UNCW and see how it goes. We got Absolutely. some people in the chat over here. I know Ryan one or zero one oh two is very eager to play y'all. <laughs> <laughs> but either way, thank you guys so much for coming out to the C three esports league match stream, and we will see you all on Tuesday for our first look podcast. All right.